I think a lot of the people who work in open education um, are optimists and are really thinking about access on a, around financial access, especially with open textbooks and open access research. And I think if we just broaden that a little bit more about who are we including, um, broadening it just from financial access to like broader that would include accessibility and people with disabilities, that it wouldn't be a stretch kind of from a philosophical standpoint and it would make the movement much more impactful. Education is not a privilege, it's a right. So if you can do as a faculty something that give another students a chance to get access to your course or to your learning materials, then you're, you know, um, you're taking that lead to make sure that you're sharing knowledge with more people and make it more accessible. So that's why it's essential to think about it when you're planning your course or learning materials or the design of your courses. Caper BC stands for the Center for Accessible Post-Secondary Education Resources. We're funded by the Ministry of Advanced Education to provide service to students with print disabilities at 20 institutions across the province. So basically, um, for students where the print textbook is a barrier, we put it into a digital format that they can use. If you look at it as an educator, an instructor, and designer to see how I can mix uh, different parts of my course or content acts more accessible, that would help students to actually in a way to be able to um, have different ways of interacting with the content and to be able to uh, participate in the activity which um, at the end will enhance the whole uh, learning and teaching experience. Often people start with sort of the technical specs so WCAG 2.0 would be the technical spec for making digital content accessible um, but I think if you start there, it's pretty intimidating and people don't understand why they're doing all these sort of picky, maybe things that could be seen as being picky. I think it, instead it's better to start from a place of empathy for the different kinds of people in the classroom and to understand what their access needs are. If you're curious about why and you care about those people, then those kind of the technical questions and what do I need to do to, to make this accessible, you're more curious and you're more interested in the answers. The most common example um, that I like to give is on the sidewalk where there's a curb cut. Um, the curb cut allows for people with wheelchairs to kind of access the sidewalk, but it also makes it easier for people with strollers, um, if you're pushing a bike, if you're carrying a heavy load like on a cart, everyone can access the sidewalk. So it's by thinking of those things proactively, it allows better access for everyone. So in the same way, universal design for learning, by thinking of where the digital curb cuts are in the classroom, we can allow better access for different kinds of learners, including people with disabilities.